So now that we've gone over the simpler acquisition protocols, let's move on to more complicated designs, specifically ones that have multiple positions. And so of those, you can see we have multiple positions with Z stacks, with and without montages, and multiple positions without Z stacks, with and without montages. So I'm going to start with a multi-position design without Z stacks. Uh, and I'm going to show you um, how to add positions and what things you need to take into account when you do add those positions. So uh, first, uh, you can see that I've already uh, set this before the video to just one repeat, so it's not actually a time lapse. Um, and I don't have a montage, I've disabled that. So I really, I just wanna focus on the multi-position settings. Um, so when you're in a multi-position uh, protocol, uh, you will add different positions where you wish the microscope to acquire data. Uh, when you do that, one of the things that uh, might change between those positions is the focus. So the things that you are interested in might be at different Z positions. Now, uh, the complication with that is that this microscope system has two ways of controlling the focus. One is controlling the focus knob on the actual microscope. That controls the position of the lens. That has a very large range because the lens can move a very large range, but it's comparatively slow because there's a mechanism that needs to move something very heavy. So the nose piece of the microscope up and down. Um, there's another system of controlling the focus on, on, on this microscope, which is a piezo. That's uh, something that moves the sample itself. It's very fast, um, but it has a limited range of about 150 microns. That is what you control with this slider here. So if I go to live, you can see if I move the piezo, I can change the focal position and I can type whatever position I want as well. If I move the focus knob, you won't see anything happening to the piezo, but the focus will change on the image. If you want to use the focus knob uh, with this, you have to turn off piezo and now you will be able to see when I change the focus knob that this number changes. And also when I adjust this, I'm actually adjusting the position of the lens, so the focal position of the lens. So the, the recommended workflow here, given that we have all these different uh, focus uh, options, is to have the piezo engaged, have it in the zero position, and then adjust the focus uh, to start with, with the focus knob. At that point, uh, if you're going to mark multiple positions, you can either adjust the focus between the positions with the piezo, with the focus knob, or with a combination of either. So what I would say is that if you're moving more than 150 microns in Z between the different positions you're acquiring, and this would be very atypical, it'd be a very thick sample, then you want to adjust uh, the positions using the focus knob. If you're moving less than that, you can also use the focus knob. If you're moving less than 150 microns and want to go as fast as you possibly can, then use the piezo. So let's just uh, use a combination of those and kind of see what it looks like. So let's say this is a nice position that we're, we're happy with. To add this position to our list of positions, I'm going to click on this plus sign. And so now that position will be added. If I move to a different location in the sample, for example, let's say here, I haven't changed the focus uh, at all, which is why it looks fuzzy. This slide is purposefully tilted. I can then, for this position, for example, adjust the piezo until we're at the focal plane that I want and then add this new position. I can try this again for a different location. But to get to this location, I'm gonna leave the piezo where it is now, but adjust just the focus on the focus knob on the microscope. And I'm going to add that position. I'm going to turn the live off. So now we have three positions, and the way I adjusted the Z at each one was different. This one, uh, they were both in the resting position. This one, I moved the piezo. And this one, I left the piezo in the same position as this, but moved the um, 
uh, the focus knob. So I now have these three positions. If you have more positions, uh, you can optimize the path uh, so that you avoid things like something bouncing back and forth and taking kind of a, the shortest possible path. Um, you can also uh, introduce a delay when moving between positions. And by default, you will at each time point visit all positions. Uh, as opposed to at each position running the full time series before going on to the next one. But you can do either one. This is the more typical at each time point visiting all the positions. So now that we have this, if we hit acquire, what we'll get is images at various positions. And if we have this engaged here, we will see where those positions are relative to each other. So if we hit acquire, it'll go to the first position, acquire it, second, and then the third. If we turn this off, the positions will show up as field here, and you can scroll between them. So that's how you add multiple positions when you don't have a Z. So if you now want to add multiple positions and do a Z stack at each one, there's a different protocol that you have to use, which is this multi-position Z stack time-lapse or time-lapse montage. So let's go to multiple position Z stack. Um, I've pre-populated this with just one time-lapse repeat. So here we have the same, the same uh, story as before for adding the positions, but now we're going to have to also uh, decide on Z-scan settings. And in the end, it's going to be the combination of the two things, uh, the Z-scan settings, which we've already covered, and the multi-position settings, which we just went over. So let me show you what that would look like. Uh, again, it's a useful thing to go to live before you start, uh, set the current Z position on the piezo to zero, and then focus using the focus knob just to kind of start at a resting position which is in the middle of the travel range of the piezo. So if we start here and uh, we evaluate, uh, before we add the position, we kind of want to see uh, what kind of Z stack we want. And so uh, we will want, let's say, this to be the center of our Z-stack, so we'll set this as center. And maybe we want to take a 10 micron Z-stack with 2 micron spacing. Okay, so then once we have this, we're going to add this to the multi-position setting, and now we're going to go somewhere else. So let me go here. And so here, I want the center to be at a slightly different position. So I'm going to move the piezo until I'm in the middle of the Z stack. So you can see we're no longer the middle is no longer zero, but it's five. I'm going to set this as our scan center. And once I've set that at my scan center, I'm going to add that position to my list of multiple positions. Finally, let me go to another location. So let me go here. I'm going to adjust the piezo at a different position, wherever it's the center of this, let's say here. So that's minus five. I'm going to set that up at that position. And now I have three positions which have different Z uh, locations. In this case, I use the piezo, but I could have used the focus knob uh, for each of them. And uh, when I hit acquire, it will acquire a Z stack at each location. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go to maximum intensity projection into the multi-location feature, and we'll hit acquire. And what we should see is how it builds a multi uh, maximum intensity projection at each of those locations. And you can see if I turn that off, you can see how each location is kind of perfectly centered where it should be even though they are in different Z positions. So the software understands all of that without any problem. Now this multi-position uh, list allows uh, a number of things to be done. Um, if you click on a, a position and click on this button, it'll go to that position. Uh, in this case, let's go to the second one, which is this one. So if I go to live, you can see that we are not there, but if I go select that second one, which is the one that had more cells and click on this, we go to that position. Um, there's a few other options here. This allows us to remove this position from the table. This button allows us to remove all positions from the table. 
these buttons allow us to change the order in which these positions uh, are acquired. Um, this is a way of going to the next position on the list. And I think when it's at the end, it toggles back to the beginning. And then let's say we're here. Let me go to this position. Uh, there's a few other more kind of more sophisticated things that we can do, which is, for example, we can change, replace this position. So I could do something like this. I could replace this middle one with where we are now by clicking this button. So now uh, if we acquire, we'll have this position as our number two. And the other thing is I can shift all the positions over in X, Y, and Z. If I want to do it in X, Y, for example, let's say I discover that I actually want to be a little bit to the east and north of the positions I marked. If I say this, what it'll do is it'll shift east and north from the positions I marked, and it'll apply it to all the positions. So it's just an offset. And if I had moved Z, it would apply the X, Y, Z offset to all positions. So if I click this, it tells me when we're about to update the whole list. I say OK. So if I acquire now, what we'll have is positions where the second one is different, but also all of them have been shifted. Uh, that might not be as easy to tell as we would like, given the slide that we have. But if we look at the previous uh, one, let's see if I can do that. You can see, for example, this feature has moved southwest because I shifted everything northeast. So you can see that that remapping uh, worked as expected.